I'm Marie Stegner, consumer health advocate for May Brigade, the leader in greenhouse cleaning. My role is to help women become more aware of the health impacts of common household chemicals. Because October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, I wanted to share some information with you about household cleaning products and breast cancer. Women's Voices for the Earth is a national organization that works to eliminate toxic chemicals that impact women's health by changing consumer behaviors, corporate practices, and government policies. Erin Switolsky, Executive Director for Women's Voices of the Earth, is here with us today to talk about the correlation between household cleaning products and breast cancer. Welcome, Erin. Thank you very much for having me, Marie. In your opinion, are women aware of the dangers of toxic chemicals in the products they use every day? I don't think women really are very aware of the potentially toxic chemicals that are in the products they use every day. In fact, I think women actually expect that when they go into the store and they pick up a product off the shelf that they can trust that those chemicals have been evaluated thoroughly for safety before they're put in there. But the reality is that's just not the case. There's really uh, nobody that's looking thoroughly at those chemicals and testing them, in particular for long-term health impacts, for chronic things like cancers and um, asthma, those sorts of things. Tell us a little bit about the Safe Cosmetics Act. Well, so there's two pieces of legislation in Congress right now that pertain to cleaning products. Uh, one is called the Household Products Labeling Act, and this bill would require that the cleaning product makers list all the ingredients they use in their products right on a product label. So if you're interested in the chemicals that, that are in your products, you can go to the store easily, pick up a bottle, read the label, and know what's in there. Uh, right now in the United States, there is no law that actually requires companies to disclose the ingredients they're using in their products. So the industry is really taking it upon themselves to, to uh, determine what's safe for use in the products that they sell to us. Uh, so this law would simply require that uh, we have ingredient listing on the product labels. The second piece of legislation that's relevant to cleaning products is called the Safe Chemicals Act. And this bill would update an old uh, law that we have in place right now in the United States called the Toxic Substances Control Act. This law was enacted in 1976, and at that time, Congress said, okay, let's enact this law. All the chemicals that are in use, which was about 62,000 chemicals at the time, we're going to say is safe because those chemicals are already in use, so they're grandfathered in as safe. Well, now here we are 30 years later, and we can see that we've got science to show that, in fact, some of those chemicals aren't so safe. So it's time to really update that law, and that's what the Safe Chemicals Act would do. And that would ensure that all the chemicals being used in consumer products broadly, including cleaning products, are being thoroughly evaluated for safety before they're allowed on the marketplace. Do you believe there's a correlation between toxic household cleaners and breast cancer? There hasn't been a lot of research on this. So no one has done a study where they have followed women who've used cleaning products, used a certain type of cleaning products in certain amounts at regular times, and then tracked them to see if they've gotten breast cancer later. But what we do know is that some new research came out. Women with breast cancer did report that they had higher rates of using cleaning products than, than women without breast cancer. Um, we certainly have evidence to say that there is cause for concern. And one of the, the, the types of chemicals that's commonly found in cleaning products are endocrine disrupting chemicals. An endocrine disruptor is basically a chemical that interferes with the body's normal hormones like estrogen. Well, if you've got abnormalities with estrogen in your body, that can contribute to the growth of breast cancer cells. So what we're looking at is chemicals, um, things called alkyl phenols. These are often found in laundry detergents. Triclosan, this is a chemical that is a, uh, dis found in disinfecting sprays. It's a pesticide, a registered pesticide with the Environmental Protection Agency. And this chemical is commonly found in, um, in liquid hand soaps. In fact, 76% of liquid hand soaps that we use contain triclosan. Another chemical is synthetic musks. These musks are found in a lot of products that have fragrance in them. And pretty much most of those cleaning products that you're going to buy out there um, contain some type of fragrance. And unfortunately, we don't know exactly what fragrance chemicals are in, in that actual fragrance makeup. But we do know that these types of chemicals are endocrine disruptors. Thank you, Erin. Paula Mosin is an Emmy Award-winning filmmaker, 
educator and also a breast cancer survivor. Through her documentary feature film, Life Interrupted, Paula shares experiences of five unique breast cancer survivors, including herself, through various stages of the disease. Welcome, Paula. Well, Marie, thank you so much for having me here today. Breast cancer is an equal opportunity disease. It cuts across socioeconomic, ethnic, geographic, and age boundaries. I think it's very important to tell a variety of stories from different women's experiences. Were any of the women in your film able to connect their illness to environmental factors? Currently, I'm working with rural Montanans, specifically Native Americans. One of my interviewees is a woman from the Fort Belknap Reservation from the Grovant tribe. She attributes the current rise in cancer rates on her reservation to the land dusky mines that have been operating there for several years. These mines are gold mines where they are separating the gold from the ore with cyanide. The cyanide has over time leached into the groundwater, into the hills and endangered wildlife. She thinks perhaps that this cyanide has also contributed to the rise of cancer on the reservation. How have the lifestyles of these women changed? For example, are they more aware of products that contain toxic chemicals? Well, to be honest, every single woman that I've interviewed so far has made conscious choices to change their lifestyle. We're all members of the dreaded sisterhood, and none of us want to be typecast as victims. We want to make the changes over things that we have control over. In terms of cleaning products and cosmetics, I think women are just starting to become more critical label readers. Unfortunately, when you live in a rural place, it's not as easy to have access to fresh fruits and vegetables or organics or natural cleaning products. What's been interesting is that some of these women are deciding to make their own products. Women are using uh, household items like vinegar and baking soda for cleaning products and using olive and almond oils for moisturizers. After your diagnosis, you spoke about being proactive and taking back control of your life and your body. How did you accomplish this? If I read that there's anything toxic on my bathroom cleaner, uh, or my floor wash, I just throw it out. It's not worth it to me anymore. One of my resources is the Environmental Working Group Cosmetic Safety Database, which is online, and they list pretty much everything that's out there, and they rate it on what is considered healthy and what is considered dangerous. The Women's Voices for the Earth has uh, some wonderful cleaning recipes that you can make yourself and then clean your house with it. And they're actually really, really fun and they save you money. So what could be better? Breast cancer is the second leading cause of cancer death in American women. According to the American Cancer Society, 30% of breast cancers can be detected through monthly self-breast exams and 85% can be detected with a mammogram. The American Cancer Society recommends that women 40 and older get a screening every year. If you haven't had your screening yet this year and you are a female over 40, make a plan to get your exam during October's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And share this video with women you know by forwarding the link. For more information, please visit our blog at blog.maybrigade.com. Thank you.